Lesson 13.1b, Calculating Theoretical Probability of Simple Events. Theoretical probability is the probability that an event occurs when all of the outcomes of the experiment are equally likely. It's based on ideal occurrences. Theoretical means planned or worked out in the mind. So here's an example. When tossing three coins, a penny, nickel, and dime, what's the probability of getting two coins to land as heads? Our sample space would be for penny, nickel, dime. That's the order we're doing it. Penny, nickel, dime, penny, nickel, dime. We're going to use H for heads and T for tails. We've got all three penny, nickel, and dime land heads, or we've got the penny and nickel land heads and the dime lands tails. We have the penny as heads, the nickel as tails, the dime as heads. We've got the penny as tails and the nickel and dime as heads. See how we're doing that? Well, for two coins to land as heads, we would have three out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The probability of having them land two as heads would be three eighths. We have three out of eight. So in theory, the probability is three eighths. For experimental probability, we would actually flip a penny, nickel, and dime a number of times and then find what the experimental probability is. So for theoretical probability, we have the probability of the event is equal to the number of ways the event can occur to the total number of equally likely outcomes. And probability can be written as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. So the probability of two heads is equal to three eighths. We can also write it as 375 thousandths as a decimal, or 37 and five tenths, or 37 and a half percent. A bag contains four green gems and six pink gems. We select one gem, we stick our hand in the bag, and we pick one randomly from the bag. What is the probability that we select a green gem? And remember to write the answer in simplest form. First thing we do is find the number of ways the event can occur as the number of green gems. There's four of them. Then we find the total number of equally likely outcomes as green plus pink. So we're going to add the green plus the pink gems. That's going to be four plus six. That's ten possible outcomes in the sample space. And we find the probability of selecting a green gem. The probability of green gem is four out of ten. It's four tenths. We remember to simplify it. It's two-fifths. We can write it as a decimal as 40 hundredths. We can write it as a percent as 40 percent. So here we have a number cube, and we roll a number cube one time. What is the probability that we roll an odd number? And remember to write the answer in simplest form. Well, a number cube has six sides with one, two, three, four, five, six of which 1, 3, and 5 are odd numbers. The probability that we roll an odd number would be three odd numbers out of six numbers in all. That would be 3 6, which simplifies to 1 half. The sample space contains six total outcomes in all, these six different numbers, which is our denominator. The number of ways the event can occur is the quantity of odd numbers, there's three of them, on the cube as our numerator. Make sure to write the correct ratio. It's very important to count the total number of equally likely outcomes separately from the number of ways the event can occur. So the probability to roll an odd number is there's three odd numbers on the number cube, six numbers in all on the number cube as three six and we can simplify it to one half. Now the complement of this event is not rolling an odd number. That would be the probability of it not being odd. 
When we roll the number cube, we know the outcomes are equally likely because any number is as likely as another to be rolled. When picking gems from the bag, there are different quantities of green and pink gems. This means the probability of picking green is different than picking pink. The complement of the event rolling a 4 is not rolling a 4. So the probability of not 4 would be how many are not 4 on this number cube. Well, there's six numbers, and five of them are not a 4. That means it's 5 sixths. The complement of rolling a 4 is not rolling a 4, and that would be 5 sixths as our ratio. The set of outcomes in the sample space, but not in the event, is the complement of the event 4, written as 4 with this bar over the top of it. This means the complement. When we have P, open parentheses, and then our event with the bar over the top, and then close parentheses, that means we're looking for the complement. We're finished with this second part of the lesson. We're going to move on to the last part, comparing theoretical and experimental probability. I hope you have a wonderful day, and if this was helpful, hit the like button for me. That does help me. Bye.